Hi, I am José Wesley from UFMG and today I talk about the TBAA metadata. LLVMIR has its own type system, which is different from the type system of the source language of a program. Besides that, memory doesn't have a type, and this makes the LLVM type system not proper for type-based alias analysis, which is what TBAA stands for. Given that, LLVM uses the metadata mechanism to store information regarding the type system of a higher level language. By using this, one is able to implement the aliasing rules from C or C++, as well as implementing custom analysis that depend on the program language type system. In this class, we shall see the two main parts of the TBAA system. The semantics, which describe the access flags and type descriptors, and the representation, which explain how those information are encoded as metadata nodes. Type descriptors express the high-level language type system. There are the scalar descriptors that describe types that do not contain other types. Each scalar type has a parent, which must be also a scalar type in the TBAA system. This parent relation forms a tree in the TBAA system, which we call the type descriptor graph. There are also the struct descriptors that denote types that contain a sequence of other type descriptors together with their offsets. Let's take an example and see how the TBAA graph looks like. Each node in the TBAA graph is a descriptor for one different type in the source code. There exists the root node some nodes can be under different root nodes, but in that case the alias relationship between them is unknown, and LVM assumes that they may infer. All we will discuss here is valid for nodes under the same root. There is a node for the char type, because in C and C++, char can be used to access any arbitrary type. Then we have the nodes of the types contained in the program. Notice that every descriptor has an immediate parent. For example, the parent of int is char and the immediate parent of inner struct is int. An access tag is a metadata attached to load and store instructions. They describe the location being accessed in terms of the type system of the high-level language. An access tag is a metadata attached to load and store instructions. They describe the location being accessed in terms of the type system of the high-level language. It consists of a base type, an access type, and an offset. Access tag can describe two things. 1. If base type is a struct type, the tag describes a memory access of a value of type access type contained in the struct of type base type at the offset offset. And 2. If base type is a scalar type, the offset must be 0 and the base type and the access type must be the same since you are accessing a scalar. Continuing with our example, in function f, we can see four different axes and its corresponding tags. For example, the first tag tells us that we are accessing a member of type float within a variable of type outer struct at the offset 0. The last axis is to a scalar type, thus the base and access type are the same and the offset must be 0. As I said earlier, all the TBA system is encoded as metadata. Therefore, the components we just saw are represented as metadata nodes in the IR. The TBAA root node is a node with either zero operands or one single operand, which must be a metadata string. 
Scalar type descriptors are represented as a node with two operands. The first is a metadata string denoting the name of the struct type, and the second is a node which points to the parent of the descriptor, which is either another scalar type or the TBAA root. Scalar type descriptors can have an optional third argument, but it must be the constant integer zero. Struct type descriptors are nodes with an odd number of operands that is greater than one. The first operand is a metadata string denoting the name of the struct type. After that, the struct type descriptors have a sequence of an alternating metadata node and a constant int, representing the member and the offset being assessed. Finally, the access tags are represented as nodes with either three or four operands. The first operand is a node pointing to the representing base type. The second is a node pointing to the representing access type. The third operand is a constant int that states the offset of that access. If a fourth field is present, it must be a constant int value at 0 or 1. If it's 1, then the access tag states that the location being assessed is constant, according to the concept of constant memory for alias analysis. We can access the TBAA metadata in the IR through the access flag. As said before, access tags are attached to load and store instructions. The following code gives us access to the metadata nodes and its components. We get it using the name TBAA. Then we can iterate over the whole TBAA tree by iterating the operands of the metadata nodes as we seen in previous classes. Back to our example, let's see how the TBAA metadata looks like in the IR. In order to tell Clank to generate TBAA metadata, we must enable optimizations, so we shall compile it with minus O1. We shall omit some of the IR here and focus on the part that is relevant for our purposes. As you can see, every assignment in function f has a corresponding store in the IR. And all the store instructions have TBAA metadata detected. And here we can see all the TBAA metadata in this module forming the graph that we saw. For example, for this store instruction, Note 47 says that this is an assignment. Note 38 describes the type of the variable and Note 44 describes the type of the struct field being assigned. From Note 38, we know that the type outer is composed by a float at offset 0, a double by node 42 at offset 8, and a struct inner by node 43 at offset 16. So that was today's class. We saw what TBAA metadata is, how it is compounded, and how to get it in the IR. You feel free to write me with questions and comments. You can find the reference and links below in the description. There is also a link to a video from the LLVM Developers Conference if you want to know more about TBAA in general in LLVM. Thanks for watching.